Hey guys, uh, Renu here. Um, so yeah, last week we had the first ever SketchUp 3D base camp in the UK. Um, so I would really like to thank uh, Richard O'Brien at SketchUcation and the rest of the SketchUcation team for bringing this event to the UK. They've been doing these in America for a while uh, and it is very, very useful. Um, loads of plugins, loads of sort of um, hands-on workshops, just demos and things. Uh, well worth uh, the two days and £175. So yep, yeah, thanks to those guys. Okay, so for those people who missed my presentation on the first day, I uh, just sort of decided to do a quick little video uh, of what was sort of discussed uh, in, in my presentation. All right, my name is Rainer van der Nest. I'm an application specialist at Excitec, um, and I specialize in Revit, AutoCAD, and SketchUp. Uh, really happy to have a quick little chat with you guys about a workflow between Revit and SketchUp, sort of going in both directions. Right, uh, just a little bit about my company, Excitec. Uh, we've been around since 1985. There's over 100 staff members at Excitec. Uh, head office is in uh, Enfield. Uh, we're the largest Autodesk Platinum partner in the UK and we're an authorized training center. Uh, we're also the largest SketchUp reseller in the UK and an authorized training center. And we offer services and solutions like consultancy, tech support, facilities management, training, software, IT, and data, data management. So we do offer quite a lot of uh, sort of uh, SketchUp training as well essentials advanced and sort of workshops okay BIM building information modeling hopefully you've all heard the term before you're familiar with the the BIM process but it basically takes a project from concept phase all the way through to demolition or renovation um, as you can see in the the slide there sort of starting off with programming or planning um, just sort of a bit of an overview of the project then conceptual design detailed design analysis documentation fabrication construction so uh, adding time and cost to your project construction logis logistics uh, so planning uh, f operation and maintenance so again sort of your CAFM or facilities management and then into demolition or renovation so the life cycle of the project basically and um, Excitec, we sell a load of sort of software um, and also support on various um, of these sort of processes. And I'm always asked to sort of justify where SketchUp fits in uh, into this sort of whole process. And now for the more advanced sort of SketchUp users, we do know that quite a few of these processes can be done in SketchUp, like conceptual design, detail design, analysis, with the help of some extensions, uh, documentation with the help of layout, um, and even some of the 4D and 5D stuff, uh, again with sort of the help of extensions. Right now, so Revit is commonly used as the main tool to create these intelligent BIM models. And a lot of our clients um, use sort of SketchUp and they also do use Revit, but they get frustrated by the fact that they can do their conceptual design very quick and easy inside SketchUp. And then they actually have to stop and redo everything inside Revit to sort of recreate the geometry. So now we're going to have a look at uh, a few workflows on getting your SketchUp model into Revit with the least amount of information lost. Now these are the ones that I've come up with, but there might be more or easier ones. I'd love your comments on these if you guys uh, can sort of give a bit of feedback. Right, now the first one is a simple link or import CAD. So you, inside Revit you just go insert uh, tab and then you can go click on link CAD or import CAD. The dialog box that pops up is very similar in both counts. Uh, you go and select the file, you pick the, the files of type. Um, Revit does work really well with MicroStation, AutoCAD and SketchUp. Um, as you can see in those file extensions there. So you pick this, the file, just click open and it comes straight into your Revit model. You can also go and click on link IFC and uh, for those of you who do know you can actually export your SketchUp files as IFC files now. So inside Revit you can just click link IFC and that will also bring in the model. Uh, in the next slide there you can see this is inside Revit so that is a Revit model and um, the desk and the chair in, uh, on all three of those counts are basically different file formats. So you've got SketchUp on the left, AutoCAD in the middle and then IFC on the far right hand side and these are most commonly used as illustration purposes or for illustration purposes so you basically just bring in the model stick it in the corner of the room uh, it just looks pretty but you're not really going to go and explode it and start push pulling faces right now the second option is by using the IFC classifier tool and there you can see a SketchUp model. Inside SketchUp, I've just gone up and clicked on the IFC classifier tool at the top, and I've started classifying things like windows, doors, floor slabs, roofs, and walls. So you're sort of adding intelligence to your SketchUp model. Then before you do anything else, you just go and clean up the model. So I've just used the cleanup plugin. Uh, works really, really well. It's like a full-on purge, basically. Gets rid of any unwanted or unused information. Um, then I went to export, just selected 3D model, and then in the export type is an IFC file 
type uh, and you'll also see you get an export result so it sort of shows you how many doors and windows and things you've actually exported out as IFC. Right, uh, inside Revit, you again just click Link IFC as discussed in the previous workflow, and then there's the uh, the Revit model just comes straight in. Um, and sorry, that is the, the SketchUp model comes straight in. And the really nice thing about this is that on the right hand side, on the top there, you can see the linked IFC CAD file, um, and on the top left, you can actually see a Revit model. So I've just drawn something very basic that looks similar to the the SketchUp or the IFC model. And what's nice about this workflow is you still have control over that IFC file. So because you've classified it inside SketchUp, um, inside Revit, you can then go and turn off categories. So kind of like your layer property manager. Uh, so just sort of managing your layers inside SketchUp. If you turn a layer off, you can see inside Revit, there, if I turn off the category, like the walls or the roof, it does actually control the IFC file as well. So it gives you a bit more control over the geometry. And the third option is by creating a conceptual mass file. So again, before I start doing that, there's a SketchUp uh, a model, same sort of uh, model that I've been working on. Uh, I just ran a cleanup again, and I'm just sort of showing you here that I do have layers inside this uh, project. Uh, and also there's groups and components sort of shown in the outliner on the top right hand side there. All right, and inside Revit, I will just go and click Model in Place. So this is where it's different to, uh, say, the first workflow. With the first workflow, we just went to Link CAD or Import CAD and just brought that um, SketchUp project or SketchUp file straight into Revit. Uh, with this workflow, we actually go and create a mass first. Right, so inside Revit, I just went Model in Place and I created a mass file, which basically lives inside the project. It will be a, a .rvt file. You can also go and create a conceptual mass sort of um, family file um, so dot RFA file basically and then insert it or load it into your project but in this instance I just went model in place selected mass I gave it a name and then inside um, Revit still I clicked on inside of this uh, conceptual uh, mass I then clicked import CAD selected my SketchUp model and then I brought that in and then you can see the uh, the project inside all right so that is basically a mass file now and um, the benefit of doing this, you can now actually go wall by face, roof by face, and, and literally just stick on the the walls and like the roof and say the floor slabs and things like that um, onto this conceptual mass file. Revit now recognizes this file. It's not just this dumb thing anymore like the, for the first workflow. Um, you can very quickly sort of put your, your walls by face on, for instance, and then just add your doors and your windows. And you'll also see on the bottom left-hand corner there that the, the, the categories have also been imported. So your layers, you still have control. You can sort of turn those on and off if you need it to. Okay, and now we're going to sort of look at getting your Revit models into SketchUp, so basically in the other direction. And the reason for this is that at Excite Tech we have a manufacturing department sort of focusing on getting manufacturers uh, to get their models as .rfa files, so these component family files that can be loaded into into Revit, so into the uh, the BIM sort of model. Um, so a lot of the uh, the manufacturers will currently do their work in say Inventor or SolidWorks, and we're also sort of helping them creating their content now as .rfa files. Now these guys also do want their files as uh, SKP files, so SketchUp files. And uh, we've recently been asked by some of our manufacturers on just what's the easiest way actually to do that. Now from an Excitec point of view, the main reason why we would drive this and actually get manufacturers to, uh, to get their models as SKP files is because of the 3D warehouse, which you can sort of see on the left hand side there. So that's called the uh, the 3D warehouse. You can, you can basically just Google it. It is the most trafficked online 3D repository in the world. So uh, most clicks basically. I'm not sure about the the model count, but there are a lot of models in there. Uh, definitely, I think over 2.5 million models. So you can you can go and do a search and just go and try and find any sort of basic model that you might want to bring into, say, AutoCAD or SketchUp or or Revit. Uh, but what I've sort of highlighted there was the Bosch sort of product catalog. So our manufacturers now, for instance, can actually uh, buy these product pages and they can actually have their collections or their models on these specified sort of product pages. And um, there I've sort of clicked on one, so just a refrigerator, and you can see the uh, the benefit of this is people can actually use your model uh, inside, say, SketchUp or Revit, and then if they really do like it, they might as well just click on the link, go to the Bosch sort of product page, and just go and buy the refrigerator. So it gives you even more information. It's not just this 3D model, but also just where you can go and buy it straight from there. Now, um, 
other reasons why you would want to sort of bring your uh, Revit model into SketchUp is uh, yeah, just to sort of to use the easy to use uh, SketchUp tools and the extensions, which uh, could also save you quite a lot of time. You might be someone who always just uses SketchUp and you're not really sort of familiar with Revit. Uh, you can very easily apply the section cut for clarity. Uh, you can maybe use the scalp sort of plugin uh, that can also help you there very quickly sort of creating those, um, creating animations as well. Um, those are also pretty straightforward um, inside SketchUp. And um, the two last things could also be just sort of to export your model, say to Google Earth, for instance, for visualization or shadow studies. Um, and finally, to use your familiar renderers inside SketchUp. So there's quite a few there. Um, you, uh, hopefully you guys have sort of seen some of these, but they all work really, really well. Um, and yeah, you can just sort of very quickly render your Revit model inside SketchUp using the, these renderers. Okay, so the questions I was asked from our manufacturing team was how long does the process take? What information loss occurs? What's the quality of the geometry like? And from a marketing perspective, does the object carry enough of a visual impact? So taking a model out of Revit into SketchUp, does it actually look good? And the models that I've used to help me with this study was basically a basic component family and then a more complex sort of family. So just a curved organic sort of shaped uh, well, sofa in this case, and then also used a basic project model. Uh, so just sort of floor slab roof uh, walls doors and windows right now the process of exporting I uh, cleaned the model up inside Revit first so you could just do a purge making sure it sort of it looks neat and tidy um, and then I went to a 3d view it's important that you're not in a perspective view but you go to a 3d view you can turn on uh, your visibility graphics so you basically you can turn off the layers and things that you don't want um, and then I also well you can apply a section box if you wanted to sort of to hide the things that you don't need to sort of see um, and then I went to the application menu clicked export click CAD format um, and then just went for a DWG um, and you can see on the right hand side there that the file does come in straight away you can sort of see what the desk looks like I will sort of show you some observations or some pros and cons of the process uh, final thing just on the right hand side that small dialog box, dialog box there uh, you do get a few sort of options so your poly mesh your solid sort of settings Right, and the observations that I've sort of made was first up the file sizes decrease. So you can see they do get sort of quite a, a lot smaller, which is a good thing because it's just easier to work with them inside SketchUp. Now, just notice that the Couch of Viper did not actually decrease that much because it was curved surfaces. So all of those curved surfaces are broken up into sort of smaller sections, which I'll talk about in a second. All right, groups and components are automatically created. So there I'm sort of just displaying that in the outliner, but basically your Revit roof will be turned into a sort of a, a SketchUp a group or a component. So that's also very, very useful. It sort of helps to overcome with the stickiness of the model. Your Revit categories are converted to SketchUp layers automatically. So there you can see all the, the Revit categories are now sort of turned into uh, the SketchUp layers. Um, now the, the cons, uh, the two of those are basically uh, the curved surfaces are broken up into a lot smaller entities so uh, this has been a problem so sort of uh, for a while now but yeah your curved surfaces will still break up into all these small little triangles which does sort of increase the file size again and that's sort of why the the the, the, the sofa did not decrease that much um, but if you do want to bring it in I mean visually it looks fine you can see there I can literally just sort of soften or smooth the edges and bring in the sofa stick it in the corner of the room and it looks fine it's not like you're gonna go and explode and start push pulling these faces and um, the other thing was materials are not transferred so on the top left there you can see the Revit model and then you can also see the SketchUp model the materials have not actually come in um, I think there is a plugin that you can use for this uh, it's just called applying materials by layer uh, and that should help you to sort of speed the, this process up a little bit you can also sort of view your your project by layer so which I sort of demonstrated at the bottom there and this could just sort of help you to distinguish between say um, where the wall sort of ends and where the roof starts just to sort of quickly look at your your model Right, so how long does the process take? This depends on the size of the Revit model, but it usually doesn't take more than a few seconds, especially with all the models that I've worked on, um, those three and also a few more. But it's generally assumed that if it takes longer than five minutes, just crash out and maybe start again. Uh, what if information loss occurs? Mainly the materials, and obviously all of your parametrics out of, outside of the uh, the Revit project as well. So uh, a lot of the, uh, I suppose, the, the, the BIM information. 
All right, what's the quality of the geometry like? So the, the straight edges and the surfaces are fine, but the curved edges, uh, as I said, were sort of uh, the curved edges and surfaces are broken up into small entities. And then uh, from a marketing perspective, does the object carry enough of a visual impact? Yes, definitely. It does um, look uh, pretty good, uh, even though creating Revit content is, is all about low level of detail. So basically just drawing a, a dull sort of looking chair, but it's very intelligent. So there's a lot of information attached to that chair. And in SketchUp, it's all about the look and the feel. So looking really good. Um, there is an overlap. So your Revit models could look actually, uh, could look really good and your SketchUp models could actually be intelligent. Right, and that brings me to the uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, as I said, guys, I didn't really have a lot of time to actually look at these workflows, so there might be some better options, maybe uh, exporting as OBJ files or FBX files or maybe DWFX files. Uh, if you have any input or anything, sort of uh, any comments and stuff, please sort of uh, just type it down at the bottom. I would love to hear from you and sort of if we can sort of uh, just sort of um, help each other sort of to work out the best workflow for this. Right guys, and finally, just a, a few highlights uh, of the two days at the the 3D Base Camp. Uh, for me personally, just some of the things I sort of picked up on that I thought was very useful. Um, probably in number one, uh, like in the first place, uh, is Plus Spec. Um, Andrew Dwight came over from Australia, sort of showed his plugin, and it is it is amazing. Uh, it basically makes uh, SketchUp behave like Revit. It's parametric, so you literally click on a beam or a column or a wall type, and you can resize, and you still have control over these models after you've created them. So so very exciting stuff. Um, hopefully we can also get that to export as an IFC file format, so sort of to, to take it into Revit and then uh, be able to change, say, a IFC window or a plus spec window over to a Revit window. So exciting stuff coming ahead from them. Uh, the 3D connection guys uh, showed their mice. So also just sort of saving time uh, with a 3D mice and just sort of um, their collection. Uh, we also had vertex modeling. So these guys were actually, uh, they've got um, highly detailed, precise models of say London, for instance, uh, just precise urban landscapes that you can go and buy off of them and then they're sort of attached to your model. Uh, Sephira systems were also there. Uh, they were looking at the HVAC analysis, so cooling, heating, air handling, heat rejection, things like that. Uh, then we had also had uh, Cubity. Uh, it's actually the photo you, you see on the right hand side there. These guys came over, uh, and it's just a very, very useful sort of online viewer uh, with added benefits. You'll have to go and sort of play around with it with Cubity, but it's free. You don't have to sign up or anything. You you go on the, the your, your web browser and you literally just drag and drop files onto their website, and it will open up. It takes a bit of time, but it opens up. You can interrogate the model. So your clients, for instance, who don't have any software could just sort of drag and drop files and then um, view them online. Uh, very, very useful. Uh, we also had Passive House um, and just yeah, heat analysis. So they did their demo on that. Uh, then had a look at V-Ray. Um, and yeah, just what's new, it's just sort of being simplified, being quicker, sort of faster, just more user friendly. Um, Scatter is a very, very exciting new plugin. I definitely uh, would recommend you having a look at that. Uh, it's not out yet. Um, maybe before the end of the year, maybe sort of beginning of next year, but um, a very, very useful plugin, um, almost like an, uh, sort of a uniform random sort of array tool. It'll scatter uh, objects around your model, but not just planar. It will actually attach to sort of surfaces and um, great for like grass modeling or like landscaping. Uh, yeah, just, just sort of Google it and, and, and check that out. Um, and then we also had Tom um, sort of displaying his, um, or demoing his, his plugins. Uh, so we had a look at Subdivision and Quadface, two plugins that are very, very useful, uh, especially if you look sort of looking into organic modeling. Uh, and yeah, the then sort of finally, um, we also had the guys from Quarit sort of do a, uh, a demonstration. And yeah, these are the plugins that they sort of recommended that they use. So um, I'm going to leave you guys with this final slide. Uh, you can sort of take these down, but just sort of demoed a lot of these plugins and things. So it's definitely worth coming to these Sketchucation uh, 3D base camps uh, if you can next year. Right, great. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye.